Are you tired of not finishing what you started? Are you afraid to make goals because you don't want to face the disappointment of not reaching them again? Here's the truth. Creating a new vision board and buying a new planner alone is not going to help you reach your goals. In today's video, however, I'm sharing the one-step fail-proof planning practice I have used for years that actually works. So if you really want to accomplish the plans God has placed on your heart and see your God-sized dreams come to pass, stay tuned. Welcome to Beloved Women with me, Christina Patterson, where we empower women in the love and truth of Jesus Christ. Please be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a video to grow your faith. And for daily beloved encouragement, I invite you to join me in the Beloved Women app. It's the beginning of the year and everyone is excited to start fresh. So let me ask you an honest question. On a scale of one to 10, how ready are you for this year? 10 being, I already finished all my planning and I am ready to go. And one being, oh wait, it's a new year already? <laughs> Wherever you find yourself on this scale, today's video will help you to learn the obvious but frequently overlooked reason you can't finish what you start, the first step to take to overcome that challenge so you can dominate your goals this year, and how to unlock God's power to make this year your best year yet. But first, if it's not January 1st, when you are watching this, that is okay. I honestly wanted to post this video on January 1st, but here we are. But I was reminded of some wise words from my friend and creator of Power Sheets, Laura Casey, who often says, there is nothing special about January 1st. So don't wait for the beginning of next year or next month or the next Monday to get started on what you will learn in this video. You can start these simple practices today to get the results that will make an impact for a lifetime. Remember, a life well lived is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Speaking of running, in high school, I ran the 300 meter hurdles and I absolutely hated it. Trying to run as fast as you can against competition is hard enough, but the competition was not my only and greatest challenge. It was the obstacles I had to jump over on my way to my end goal. The hurdles, however, were, I will admit, intentionally placed equidistant on the track, and I could clearly see them. So I knew when I needed to jump. Now we wish the challenges that we face in life were as predictable, but they're not. So when we make our plans, we usually envision a clear path to our end goal. And well, that's just not how life works. If we want to accomplish our goals, we need to expect opposition. This is especially true for someone of faith like you. You think to yourself, I just want to eat healthy, start a business, go on more date nights with my husband. But what you're actually doing is potentially breaking generational cycles of disease, poverty, and broken homes. You're not just making plans, you're taking territory. And with that, oh, you better believe comes some opposition. When you're trying to do something new that's honoring God through your life, you are encroaching on enemy territory. You think you're just setting a new goal and you're actually engaging in spiritual warfare. Now, that's not a bad thing. We need to courageously and boldly take territory and claim what is ours in Christ. But we must realize that there will be opposition. Just because we want to do something good doesn't mean it will be easy but I am here to tell you today, do it anyway. One of the major reasons people don't accomplish their goals is not always physical or even mental. Many times it's spiritual opposition. When we accept that fact, we better prepare ourselves from getting discouraged and thinking that we're weak or incapable when actually the opposite is true. The enemy is coming for you because you are making your way to victory and he will do everything and anything he can to stop you before you get started. A common mistake we make is stopping when opposition comes instead of pushing through. We mistakenly think that the opposition means we're not strong enough. Maybe this was a bad idea and I don't make good decisions and we talk ourselves out of making godly progress. 
When I ran hurdles, I was not surprised when they were on the track. I expected them to be there because that was part of the race. Can you imagine if I ran up to the first hurdle and stopped? No, I jumped. I overcame the hurdle. I kept going because the hurdle was not the destination. The finish line was. The obstacles we face in life are not the end of our dreams and plans. They are the stepping stones that strengthen us along the way to our God-given goals. So what we need to do then is to stay focused. When you think of a runner at the beginning of their race, they are not looking to their competitors or surprised by the hurdles that they must overcome. Where is the runner's focus? It's on the finish line. It's on the end goal. When my kids are practicing shooting basketball, my husband always reminds them to look up, keep your head up, look at the goal when they shoot. As we dream and make our plans, we too need to focus on the goal. In Philippians 3.14, the Apostle Paul says, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul had more opposition and competition than we could ever dream of as he moved forward to fulfill God's call on his life. But he wasn't focused on it. His eyes were on God and he finished strong and he was victorious in accomplishing his goals. Opposition overtakes you when you get distracted by it. Competition defeats you when you don't stay in your lane. But victory is reserved for those who keep their eye on the prize. With unlimited distractions, this is not easy to do. But there is one practice that has helped me to accomplish my goals for years, and that is selecting a word for the year. Not a long list of resolutions, but just one word that will be my focus for that year. Choosing one word helps in a few ways. First, it keeps your focus simple and memorable. If you get off track, you easily come back to focus by remembering your one simple word. Second, having a word of the year makes it easier to stay on track because you can filter out all your decisions through that one word focus. Last year, I shared with you that my word for the year was strength. I wanted to get physically stronger through strength training and spiritually stronger as well. When I wanted to try something new or change something up, I could easily ask myself, will this ultimately make me stronger? Does this align with my focus for the year? This made decision making easier. And now I can look back over last year and see how I did get stronger in many ways. This year, my word is build. Last year established a strong foundation for my life and this year I want to build on that. So that will be my focus. So out of all the millions of words in the world, how can you choose just one? Well, first I encourage you to pray about it and to ask God. He will lead you in the right direction. Second, Write down your dreams and your goals for the year and see if there is a common theme that connects them all together. Once a runner has their focus, it's now about maintaining the stamina and energy to finish strong and the power to do that comes from the work that they put in before the race. What do they eat? What thoughts are in their mind and their lifestyle all contribute to how they perform on game day? In the same way, once you have your word for the year, you need power to see it through. And this is where God's word comes in. Not only do I select a word of the year, I also choose a scripture of the year as well that aligns with that word. So what I do is I conduct a quick Bible search of my word of the year and choose a scripture that encourages me in that direction. I'll certainly write it down, maybe even place it on my desk where I can see it every day and even memorize it. When Joshua was called to lead the Israelites into the promised land by taking new territory, God told him this, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Joshua was told to obey God's word in order to be successful, and he was instructed to do so by keeping God's word in his heart. 
feeding our hearts and minds the truth of God's word is the fuel that we need to start, run, and finish strong. So choosing a scripture of the year helps keeps our minds on God's word instead of our opposition or challenges. So we not only reach our goals, but will also be in alignment with God's will, making us unstoppable. Then we will be able to say confidently the words of Paul in Philippians 1.6, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his good work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. You might not finish everything you start, but if God is in it and he's called you to it, he surely will. Now that you are encouraged to run with focus this year, you need a plan to get to your end goal. So watch this video to learn my easy four-step process to biblical planning rooted in the power of God's word. And for more encouragement, please download my free Bible study called Worry Free to learn the three lies feeding your worry and the truth to set you free at belovedwomen.org. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved.